Will you join us on episode three of the Carp Interest Gemini Carp Tackle collaboration? And we're a re what are you laughing at? <laughs> it's like you were reading off a script. Welcome back to Gemini <laughs> Carp, carp <laughs> Tackle Carp <laughs> Tackle Carp <laughs> Collaboration. Shut up. And today you join us at Orchid Lakes. We're going to be doing solids versus singles again, despite Pete getting his backside handed to him in the previous two videos. He still wants to stick at it and try and get one over on me. So I'll be fishing the solid bags. Pete will be fishing the singles once again. And we'll see if I can make it through now. Infamous home of the 30s. We've decided that we're going to play a little game to decide who fishes which side of the peg. Pete's come up with a game, so I'll let him explain exactly what we're going to be doing. So it's something I've seen in the past. I can't remember where I've seen it, but it's nothing too interesting. We're just going to fill a bucket with half full, maybe three quarters full of boilie. Then the person who gets the right weight or the closest to gets the choice of the peg. Yeah, so we're going to get into that now and then we're going to get set up and get these rods out because we are both itching to get at it. I'm going to go eight pound. Eight pound. Eight pound. I'm going to hold it up as if it was a fish to give me a bit of an advantage. Yeah. Usually the kind of fishy catch, you should well, win. I'm going to try and play it smart. I think it's a bit less than eight pounds, so I'm going to go seven twelve. Oh, he's got me. Oh, yes. Nine pound and a couple of ounces. I, I suppose I deserve it. Yeah. So where right. are you going, Pete? So that case, looking at the swim, I mean, like Liam said earlier, there's not really a bad swim or a bad side to the swim. No. Uh, but I am going to choose the right side, purely because it just looks carpy. It's got an old ranging willow and a long reed line. The left hand side of the swim where I'm going to be, it's pretty much predominantly an open, an open water swim. I have got an island opposite me about 100 yards. <laughs> Whoa, big scrap. Right, and so with the uh, sides of swim chosen, the next thing is to try and find a spot. The issue is there's a hell of a lot of weed out there. Got an island in front of me, I'm just going to try and get as close to that as I can now. Massive ball of weed coming in there around the lead. I'll be shattered before I even start fishing at this rate. So aiming for a big double tree on the opposite bank. 23 wraps, Let's see how close this gets. Oh, all right, we're free. Nah, chopped up again. So I just spent the last hour marking my swim, just on the right side. Found two little spots just coming off that bush on the right, just below the tree. And my third spot is going to be right towards the willow. At, uh, I haven't counted the wrap yet, but I've found it. I'm just going to make sure it's a spot just before I wrap up and get the number. So I'm just going to fight back out there now and double check. Yeah, smooth with chunks of gravel. So all three rods now are all on the spots. I'm just going to introduce uh, three, three to five spoms maybe just over the top, just trying to fish for a bite at a time. And then if obviously if I get more bites, I'll introduce more bait. So the bait I've gone for is manila. I've gone for manila boilies chopped and holes and some manila pellets soaked in some manila liquid. So finally, after about three hours of leading about, I've managed to find a, a somewhat clear spot. It's still not crystal clear like some of the spots Pete's found, but I think it'll be perfect to present the solid bags. Uh, I'm going to run you through exactly what I'm doing 
uh, a little bit later on or probably tomorrow. But um, yeah, last bag going out now and we'll see what it brings. Uh, so I'll just get this rod set. We're going to be fishing tight clutches because there's a hell of a lot of weed out there and we don't really want to be giving the fish half a yard to get into it. So tight clutches, tight lines, any indication on the alarm and we'll be straight on it. Sorted. Just a really quick evening update for you. Uh, no, nothing's happened on the fish front, completely expected. We've been smashing the swim around all day with leads and spoms, but we're just gonna get some food on now, chill out for the evening. What are your, what are your confidence levels like, Pete? Yeah, I mean, I'm quite confident. Uh, as I said earlier, I felt my three rods down on a, on a solid bit of ground and I've put a bit of bait over them all, so I've just got to be patient and wait for them to come back in. But yeah, it's been a long day and, and it's been tiring, so we're just going to get some food on and we look forward to going more in depth with our tactics on how we're going to tackle this weedy lake at Orchid Lakes. Right then, good morning and welcome to the first day. Last night was uneventful. Um, to be honest, I was quite quite shocked that neither of us even had a one-liner. So I thought that was a bit unusual with all the weed. I thought with the fish crossing the weed or maybe we'd have at least one liner, but we haven't even heard an alarm beep. So this morning, we're just getting up now, uh, just setting up again, just gonna get some breakfast on and then we're gonna go further into our tactics this afternoon. Right, let's talk tactics. So these are the tactics I'm going with on two of my rods. Uh, due to the weed, I'm going for the Ronnie rig, but I'm opting for the nine inch version. Gemini I do do a five and a half, seven inch and a nine inch. And with these rigs, they have a 30 pound breaking strain and at each end they have a six mil loop used by Fury Carbon Fuse Bond technology, which is stronger than any conventional knot. All of the Gemini booms are made with a light refractive index of 1.42, which basically makes it almost invisible underwater. So I'm just going to quickly run you through now on how I put together one of my Gemini carp tackle booms. So once you've attached your anti-tangle sleeve onto the loop, down to the spinner swivel, choose your choice of hook, whichever you would like to use, and then you'll need a small piece of heat shrink tube just to place on your hook just before you attach it to the spinner swivel. So when it's attached to the spinner swivel, you can slide the heat shrink tube down. All you need to do then is heat the shrink tube up make it nice and neat. Once you've heated this up, you need a bait screw or a micro ring swivel and a hook bead. Whichever you choose, put your micro ring swivel or bait screw onto the hook, followed by the hook bead. Push the hook bead down to the level you want, how aggressive you want the turd, and then choice of pop-up. And then a bit of putty, and then you're good to go. And you know you've got a solid rig, it's always going to represent itself and it's always going to kick away. As for my third rod, I've taken a slightly different approach. Prior to the trip, I went onto Gemini Carp Tackle's website and I used their custom build section and I built myself a 14 inch boom to a Ronnie rig for this situation where I'm going to cast it out to where I found a little spot where there's about a foot of weed. The benefit to this rig is it's going to hit the spot where I want, the lead's going to obviously go into the weed and then the 14 inch boom is going to kick away and it's going to try and present itself on any underlying weed there is on that spot. So I'm going to attach a piece of foam to this hook just before I cast it out. Once the foam dissolves, the rig's then going to sit down, slowly, critically balanced, pushed away with the fluorocarbon boom, and it's going to sit in a position where it feels comfortable. For now, I'm going to get this one out and hopefully you can save a blank.
So as I said at the beginning, I'm using solid bags again this session. I'm gonna take you through step by step absolutely everything that's in my setup. Um, starting from the top with the rig tubing. So because I'm using the solid bags, it's, it's usually quite difficult to use rig tubing as well. But Gemini Carb Tackle do a tubing system which allows you to, to use rig tubing with the solid bags. So the tubing itself, it comes in two metre lengths. I've gone for the weed green colouring because obviously we've got a lot of weed out there. So first thing first, you take your, your tubing, get, cut down the desired length you want. If you cut it at an angle, this will aid you in the next process. So in the tubing system package itself, you get lengths of rig tubing, you get your, your tidy stem, um, you get a, a little connector and you get a metal tool. So first things first, the angle cut on the rig tubing, you slide the metal tool down there, 40 millimetres. Then you take the connector, small side first, down the, the tool, over the cut edge, twist it into place, and then you can remove the metal tool, and there you have your rig tubing all ready to go. So it's just a case now of sliding that onto the line, and then we can get into the actual solid bag itself. So now we've finished with the rig tube, but we can go on to the rig itself. Here I've got a simple turbo German rig. We've got about five or six inches of supple braid, Gemini carp tackle curve shank hook. Onto there I've slid a bait screw, and that's held in place with a, a hook bead, which I've positioned directly opposite the barb. Move on to the fun bit where we see all of the components come together. Here I've got a three and a half inch Gemini lead, and the 7.5 millimeter diameter tidy stem. This fits absolutely perfectly over the three and a half ounce lead. You can see you slide that in, push it in tight, and there you have your lead and your tidy stem ready to go. So now it's just a case of taking the rig that I showed you earlier. You've got the O-ring at the bottom of the tidy stem, loop in there first, pull it down, and then hook, hook bead and bait screw all through, pull it tight and now you're ready to tie your solid bag. So each stem has got a 45 pound braking strain. The most important thing for me is that it's a flexible fluorocarbon insert. So not only have you not got to worry about that damage in your main line, more importantly than that, it's not going to damage the fish. So once you're ready to tie your solid bag, the first step is to just add your hook bait. Like I said, I've gone for the bait screw, so it's nice and simple. We've got a dumbbell manila wafter here. Screw that on. And there's your, your rig and hook bait ready to go. There's plenty of different ways to make solid bags, but this is how I prefer to do it. Hook baiting first. Push that up to the corner and make sure there's not too much bend in your, in your rig. A little bit of pellet on top. Again, just making sure that, that hook bait hasn't moved. Now I want to fill it just above halfway with pellets and then my lead goes in. So now the lead's in, I've made it perfectly central to the bag which is going to aid with the aerodynamics. I'm not fishing too far out on this particular session but when you are it definitely helps. So now just continue to fill the bag up. Don't overfill it. Quick press down and then you just want to try and bang all the air out. Make sure those pellets are pushed down to the bottom. As you can see, the hook bait is still in that bottom corner. And then once you're happy with the pellets, grab the top, twist it. And once you've twisted it, you take your PVA tape, wrap it round three times, tie it off, trim off the tag ends. And then it's basically just about tidying the bag up and making it as aerodynamic as possible. So this one's ready now just to be filled up with some liquid and fired out into the pond. So 
Just a little update on our collaboration with Gemini Carp Tackle. We we're on session three or four for this year. We've really enjoyed our time so far. Fourth video is coming September. We're not sure what venue we're going to yet, so it's still in talking terms. But if you have any ideas, please just write below where you think would be good for us to hit. We will be continuing with the solids versus singles, although Pete's already 2-0 down, so the only chance he's got now is to snatch a draw. And as it's looking so far this session, he's going to have to pull something out of the bag if he's going to even achieve the draw. We're edging our bets as most of the anglers, in fact all of the anglers from this side of the lake have gone home this morning, so we've, we've basically got this side of the lake to ourselves with only our six rods in the water, so the thought process is that that might give us a little bit of an edge to stay here, so it might be a gamble that might not pay off, but that's where we're at and that's why we, we've decided not to try and move onto the wind. Time to put the kettle on. Yeah, time to put the kettle on for you. Your turn. It's your turn. Your turn. What vibes is this? Let's go. First two, three, or best of three? Best of three. That's best of three, okay. Best yeah. of three. If you right. turn it up, you've won. Okay, yeah. What? Yeah. Hey, this is go. What? Hey, this is go. Hey, this is go. What? Hey, this is go. Ah, yes! <laughs> one nil. What? Hey, this is go. Oh, one one. Yes! <laughs> and I've got a new kettle, so I'll let you use it. It is beautiful here though, to be fair. I thought we'd see more show. 100%. So we, we, you can see a good a good portion of the lake from here, really. But also, what, what confused me last night is how we got tight lines-ish and tight clutches, no obviously. We're having no liners and our, our line will be passing through numerous weed beds. Like I said, I just don't think there's many fish in there. I don't think there's much disturbing the bottom. Yeah. Or disturbing the weed. I think if there was fish in here, definitely where you are, I think you'd have picked one or two up. Yo, Liam. Yo. You had anything? Nah, mate, have you? Nah, me neither. Nah, see you in the morning. See you in the morning. Good morning. So we are coming into our last 24 of the session. Uh, this morning we saw two fish show so that's boosted our confidence massively as that's the first things we've seen since we've been in the peg so we are feeling a lot more confident today than we have been all session but yeah we spoke to the I think it was the manager earlier as he passed in the truck and he said that they they liked the pellet in here so we brought a sack of pellets as well and we've piled the pellet in so I've put about two and a half kilo of pellet in my spot and I think Liam's put about two and a half kilo of pellet in his spot as well. And uh go on mate. Yep. Yep, yep. Yep. What are you doing? Behave. <laughs> Sit. 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 Yeah, like I say, feeling a lot better today. I know there's only 24 hours left, but it only takes five minutes to change the session. And uh, I think we're on some good spots at the moment. And all we can do now is hope. So I'm just gonna chill out with my, my little friends here and watch the water to see if anything changes. Okay. <laughs> So we've had a little bit of a change in the weather today. The, the wind has moved from a westerly to a southwesterly, which still isn't ideal for us, but it is blowing more into, into our bank now. So like Pete said, we've gone with a heavier baiting approach on the advice of the fishery manager. I've put two of mine out with a bait boat now with a hopper full so that I know that I've got a big parcel of bait around each bag. Um, and yeah, hopefully that might be what puts one on the bank for us. So we're into our last afternoon now, uh, no more action to report. We haven't seen any more fish since this morning. Uh, we're trying, to get, trying not to get too disheartened. 
Just got to hope the carpy gods are on our side and they present us with a fish before we have to pack up in the morning. Going into the final evening then, as far as the fishing front goes, we did have a walk around again this morning, um, seeing if we could see any signs of any fish elsewhere really, but to be honest, there was no signs anywhere else and even if there was the lake's pretty pretty choked up i don't think there'd have been a move on the cards even if it was a possibility and then we're just going to spend the next couple of hours chilling out looking over the water because it, it looks absolutely stunning at the minute um, and yeah we'll we'll see what happens So that brings our 72 hour session in the third episode of the Gemini Carp Tackle Carp Interest collaboration to an end. Unfortunately, we didn't manage to catch anything, but the Evans have opened this morning. Luckily, here at Orchid Lakes, they offer a lift service, so they'll take you to and from your peg with your gear, which was an absolute godsend this morning with this rain. Um, still one more session to go this year in the collaboration. We're not sure where it's going to be yet, but we'll inform you on all of our socials as and when we do know. So thanks a lot for watching. If you haven't done so already, subscribe, hit the notification button, and we'll see you in the next one.